the path of knowledge is the way to jannah the path of knowledge is the way to jannah the path of knowledge is the way to jannah the path of knowledge is the way to الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاة والسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ وعلا آلکا وعصحابکا یا حبیب اللہ الصلاة والسلام علیکہ یا نبی اللہ وعلا آلکا وعصحابکا یا نور اللہ Dear viewers of Madani channel, once again, welcome to our transmission, Path to Success. Today, our topic is the miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ji haan, mere aqa alayhi salatu salam ke mojizat ki baat hogi. Aur Allah ki sartaba kadam shaan hai yeh. Insaan nahi insaan, woh insaan hai yeh. Ji haan, mere aqa alayhi salatu salam ke mojizat ki baat hogi, kamalat ki baat bhi hogi, saath mein ikhtiyarat ki baat hogi. Bohat kuch hoga. Deegar anbiya karam alayhi wa sallam mojizat le kar aaye. But our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joh hai, sar سے پاؤں تک جو ہے وہ موجزہ بن کر آئے تھے ایک ایک چیز جو ہے اس سے موجزات کا ظہور ہوتا ہے میرے آقا علیہ السلام کے The blessings of درود پاک آج بڑی پیاری ایک حدیث پاک ہے میرے آقا علیہ السلام نے فرمایا The beloved رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم has said The person closest to me on the day of judgment will be the one who would have recited Durood Paak in abundance. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aaj bade piyare piyare kalam bhi honge. Mojizat ke upar baad bhi hogi. Aur inshallah recitation of Holy Quran aaj inshallah humare adil bhai tilawat karenge inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلا وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَوْنَى فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرُ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرُ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ صدق اللہ العظیم سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یا رسول اللہ وسلم علیہ یا حبیب اللہ 
سبحان اللہ بولتے ہیں سنگرے سے آپ کے اشارے سے دیکھے ہیں شجر چلتے آقا آپ کے اشارے سے موج ذات شاہ کی ہے دور دور تک شہرت چاند ہو گیا ٹکڑے آپ کے اشارے سے جی ہاں آج میریکلس آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اس کے بارے میں بات چیت ہوگی انشاءاللہ ول اسٹارٹ ود انشاءاللہ آور کمر بھائی کمر بھائی میریکلس معجزات کی بات ہوتی ہے اور بھی اس کے الگ الگ نام ہیں انشاءاللہ کچھ تفصیلات انشاءاللہ لے کر چلتے ہیں ماشاءاللہ دی میریکلس آف آور بلوڈ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم دی شرعی ٹرم دی اسلامک ٹرم فور میریکل از معجزہ اینڈ A mu'jizah is an extraordinary event which is um, beyond the normal uh, ways or the normal means that people see. It has to be extraordinary. If it's not extraordinary, then obviously people will say, oh, what you've shown is something which has happened because of this or because of that. So it has to be miraculous in such a way that it shows, the event itself shows 
that there is no obvious reason or normal reason or means for it to take place. And a mu'jiza is something which is a, an event, an occurrence, which expresses the truth of prophethood of a prophet. Subhanallah. And our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, was, uh, he is an embodiment of uh, miracles. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you mentioned in the introductory part, Shasab, from his blessed head to his blessed feet, everything about him, uh, is miraculous subhanallah because uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam although he came in human form so that we feel that, so that the sahaba felt comfortable in his presence when they looked at him closely they saw all the miraculous things uh, about him and about his physical nature about his character about uh, they saw it in different attributes in him coming back to mu'jiza there are some people might think hang on does that mean that if something unexplainable happens we see something amazing that we can't explain it's a mu'jiza straight away not necessarily a mu'jiza will obviously uh, be performed by a prophet of Allah. If it's a waliullah, uh, we usually use the term karamat or karama. And if it's a pious person, we use the term ma'una. Uh, sometimes pious people, they may make dua or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give them this gift that they something miraculous is manifested through them. But there are things which can be done which seem extraordinary but are not good. Um, and they can be described with terms like istidraj. If it's a, a disbeliever, someone doesn't believe and he somehow miraculously does something, Take it doesn't necessarily mean he's true or he's upon the truth. Because in our deen, we know there is magic as well. There is black magic as well. And these things can apparently be uh, overwhelming. Same. And sometimes what happens like uh, with Musaylim al-Kazab, he would try to do a miracle and it would be the opposite would happen. So that, that, that uh, situation is called ihana. So mu'jiza is a, a miraculous uh, event which uh, expresses the truth of prophethood. It can be something which in itself is miraculous. For example, uh, the, our beloved Prophet وسلم, splitting the moon. It could be something where the, uh, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam foretold something, that something is going to happen in a certain way. It could be that something is not miraculous in itself, but it happens suddenly, which makes it miraculous. So there are different types of uh, mu'jiza when we look at it that way. Once our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he was uh, outside Madinatul Munawwara, the hadith is in Muslim, and um, he witnessed a storm brewing. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, this storm is for uh, the, a certain hypocrite of Medina. It will Allah. be his death. And when the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ reached Madinat al-Munawwara, that munafiq, that hypocrite, had died in that storm. So some things that are foretold by the Messenger of Allah ﷺ are also miraculous. And inshallah, um, one last point I'd like to mention here is different Prophets came with miracles appropriate to their age. Musa salam and his uh, blessed staff uh, completely uh, defeated the sorcerers, the magicians in the court of Fir'aun. Uh, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam with his healing powers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him, uh, overwhelmed the people of the Israelites in his time. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam came in a time where language and poetry, the Arabs were known for their uh, elo eloquence. And they, the best couplets were hung on the Kaaba. Um, the best poets were considered to be the the celebrities of that time or the VIPs of that time, they were uh, revered. So if you were a poet, people would respect you the way they respect famous people today. So uh, appropriate to that, uh, inshallah, uh, Iftikhar Bay will elaborate. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was given miracles, not only appropriate for that time uh, in terms of what, what, was, what we saw, but Many of the other miracles that other prophets mm. had, our Prophet ﷺ also showed those miracles. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Kamar Bahi explained beautifully um, about the mujiza and also uh, other things, which we call Tadraj. In this way, if the first thing is that 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 if the first 
تو اس کی الگ جو ہے نا ٹرمینالوجی ہے تو جیسے اللہ کے ولی سے کوئی چیز ہوتی ہے تو اس کو کرامت تو اس کو بھی سیکھنا پڑے گا کیا ہر ہر ایک سے یہ نہیں کہا جاتا کہ یہ یہ دکھا رہا ہے وہ پہلے پتہ تو چلے وہ کیا دکھا رہا ہے وہ پپ ہے بھی یا نہیں ہے فاسق فاجر تو نہیں ہے وہ نان مسلم تو نہیں ہے اچھا وہ گناہ گاروں کی کیٹیگری میں تو نہیں آ رہا تو نیک پرہیزگار سے جو چیز ہوتی ہے وہ الگ کرائٹیریا ہے اللہ کے پیارے انبیاء علیہ السلام سے جو چیزیں صادر ہوتی ہیں اس کو الگ جو ہے وہ کہا جیسے کہ معجزہ کہا جاتا ہے تو یہ ساری چیزیں سیکھنی پڑیں گی بہر بدلی چینل آپ کے پاس یہ سلسلے لے کر آتا رہتا ہے اللہ کرے کہ ہم سیکھنے والے بن جائیں ماشاء اللہ وی ہے افتخار بھائی وی دس ماشاء اللہ افتخار بھائی بڑا زبردست ٹاپک ہے اور اس پہ تو جتنے بھی باتیں کرتے جائیں معجزات جو ہے وہ میرا اکا علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کے جو وہ ظہور پذیر ہوئے تھے دیکھے صحابہ کرام علیہ الرضوان نے ہم نے پڑھے ان کے بارے میں لیکن کچھ چیزیں ایسی ہیں کچھ معجزات ایسے ہیں جو اب بھی ہم اپنی آنکھوں سے دیکھ سکتے ہیں اور وہ کون سا ان وہ بعد میں بھی عرض کریں گے ان شاء اللہ ماشاء اللہ بیوٹیفلی انٹروڈیوس بائی قبر بائی ماشاء اللہ یو جس مینشن از واش شاہ صاحب دا وی وش وی ہیڈ سین سم اف دیز میریکلز We didn't see the miracle of the moon being split into two Allah. and then being joined back together. We didn't see the miracle of the sun walking backwards. Allah. We didn't see the miracle of the water gushing from the fingers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We didn't see the miracle of the dead being of the dead coming back to life. We wish we had seen these miracles. Allah, Allah. But one of the miracles that we have an opportunity to see every single day of our lives from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Holy Quran, is the blessed Quran. in our houses this miracle is there and present for us to see for us to read and for us to learn from every single day subhanallah we wish and we learn and we hear on madni channel that our wish was there to see these miracles but the miracle that is in our house when did we last open it allah, allah. when did we last read the quran in the quran there are many miracles that if we read and we learn about alhamdulillah azawajal it's a lesson for us many stories in the quran that are there to guide us to direct us and make our lives better so the miracle of the quran alhamdulillah azawajal those are listening on madni channel our viewers open the quran open the when did we last open the quran one letter to read of the quran 10 good deeds alif lam mim 30 good deeds so this opportunity that we have to see the miracle of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam every single day we shouldn't waste we shouldn't put to one side it should the quran should be on top of our shelf just sitting there and we read it we open it when somebody passes away like you mentioned many times and uh, the phrases stick with me the quran is not there when someone dies and then we read it's not there when somebody when there's uh, just for the daughter in our areas in pakistan when she gets married and they put the quran over her head and she leaves the house and not for this purpose the quran is there as a guide as a light for us to guide us and to direct us in our life and today because we have stopped reciting the quran and unfortunately we believe that if the child recites the quran twice in the madrasa that's it, our job's done his job's done our job's done whether he opens it, opens it again or it doesn't open it, we think that's it, our farz is is fulfilled and then we marry our child and our second farz is done and then we waiting for hajj for our third farz and that's it, everything is complete no this is not the case alhamdulillah azawajal in daud islami when we first come to the mahal we are taught to recite read the madni qaida read with connect maharij read with tajweed and then alhamdulillah azawajal the department of daud islam in madrasa tul madina online alhamdulillah much much son as well he benefits and reads online he is doing hibs online opportunity to recite the quran correctly opportunity to recite with tajweed in the comfort of your houses so much service of deen for the, for quran and sunnah that daud islami is is doing and we are not taking full advantage of this so the miracle of the quran we will come back to inshallah but the miracle of the quran is something we can see every single day subhanallah chale ji hamara bilkul ek naye direction mein iftikhar bhai ne baat ki hai ke mujizat ke bare mein sunte hain kya lekin wo mujiza جو کہ قیامت تک کے لیے ہے اور جس کو ہم دیکھ سکتے ہیں جس سے گائیڈنس لے سکتے ہیں وہ قرآن پاک ہے جو ہمارے گھروں کے اندر ہے بابی ڈونٹ ہیو ٹائم ٹو ریسائڈ دا ہولی قرآن اللہ کرے کہ ہمیں قرآن کی محبت نصیب ہو جائے اور ہم قرآن پڑھنے والے بنے اس پہ بھی انشاءاللہ مزید بات چیت کریں گے الحمد للہ وی ہے آور بلوڈ عبد الحنان بھائی وی دس ماشاء اللہ ادک اللہ و سنہ مسکراتے بھی رہتے ہیں آج دیکھیں کیا بات کرتے ہیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ سید صاحب The Prophets of Allah, Azawajal, they are sent with miracles. Uh, one of the reasons the Prophets are given miracles is that the people accept Iman and faith. And this happened throughout the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that many people would come into the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they would say, you know, uh, prove, prove to us, show us something 
that you are the Prophet of Allah. Allah. And if you look at the, the previous Prophets, uh, they also were given great miracles by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they possessed great miracles, so people would accept Iman. They would come into the, the faith. And like Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam had so many great miracles, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, every Prophet came with different miracles. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa at time to time, different people came into the court of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they would ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when, when he would invite them towards goodness, they would say, okay, show, give us some proof that you are the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa It's mentioned that Sayyidina Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu he states that uh, a Bedouin once came into the court of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he invited him to, towards Islam. And he, he said, you know, give, show me some evidence that you are the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he says, you know, the dates on, on, that, on that palm tree, they will bear witness that I am the Prophet of Allah. Allah. Now these are dates hanging on, the, on a palm tree. And it, it's, it's mentioned that the dates came, came off the palm tree, came into the beloved court of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and bear witness that this is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not just that, them, them dates actually went back and into the same position where they were from. So the dates bear witness that this was the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was one occasion. This was the occasion of the dates. And going the, to the next step, the step as the uh, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala numa, he narrates that uh, once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were traveling and a, again a Bedouin came into the court of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa invited him toward Islam and he said, if you're the Prophet, if, uh, show me some proof, Te show me some testimony that you are the Prophet of God. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to him, he said that the, the tree at the end of the forest. Uh, now look at the beauty of this as uh, well. Uh, you know, it, the, obviously a forest is there, so it could have been the first tree, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the tree at the end of the forest will come and bear witness that I am the Prophet of Allah. Allah. Now a tree, obviously we know the condition of a tree. The, the tree doesn't just move. It ain't going to just come just like this. The, the tree, it takes his roots out of the ground and he comes into the court of the Prophet ﷺ, and loudly he testifies that uh, this is the Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now, th th these sort of incidents are happening to call, uh, make the people's mind to accept Islam. Alhamdulillah, in both of these occasions, is mentioned that these people, these Bedouins, they accepted Iman. Now look at the beauty, the, the tree is coming out of his roots. Now these are them things, uh, Kamar Bhai touched upon it briefly as well. The things which are out of, out of our senses. The mind doesn't accept it. These things can happen. That itself is a miracle. And that's when, when the prophets are, many are. The, the things which don't come to the mind. And Alhamdulillah, these incidents happen time to time in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. When people would come into the court of the Prophet ﷺ and they would ask that, if you're the Prophet of Allah, show us some sign that you're the Prophet of Allah. And things like this, branches, uh, trees, uh, they would come into the court of the Prophet ﷺ. They would bear witness that this is the Prophet of Allah ﷻ. And these lifeless objects, the objects which don't have life, no, you know, we, we, you don't consider them that they have life. They don't have the power to speak. Yet, when the Prophet Sallallahu would order them things to, they would, they, would, they would gain life. They would come into the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they would, and they would bear witness that this is the Prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Subhanallah. Wo khajuran janta hai. Katre ko samandar zarre ko sitara karte hai. कौनेन को खम आ जाता है जब जुल्फ सवारा करते मौजजा मेरे नबी का कह दिया तो हो गया जो फरमा दिया वो हो जाता है अल्लाह अज्जा वजल ने इतनी ताकत इतनी अथॉरिटी दी है रब अज्जा वजल ने अपने हबीब को के वो जो चाहे जिसे चाहे अता कर दे जब चाहे जिसे चाहे वो जन्नत हिवा कर दे नबी मुख्तार कुल है जिसको जो चाहे अता कर दे Talking about miracles, just following on from what uh, Abdul Hanan Bay was saying, that obviously the reason why, one of the reasons why these events are miraculous, because we can't really, normally things don't happen, uh, events like that don't take place. It's, it goes against normality. And the famous account, famous waqia that we referred to in the beginning, in the intro introductory phase of our session, that uh, this hadith is narrated by Sayyidina ibn Abbas, Sayyidina ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Sayyidina Anas. Uh, the strongest narration is of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, mentioned in Bukhari, Muslim, in Tirmizi. 
it's alluded to in the in Surah Qamar in the Quran, Iqtarab is Sa'atu wa Shaq al Qamar, that uh, the hour drew near and the moon split in two. Allah. Now, the Mufassirun say that this refers to the uh, one of the commentaries is it refers to the miracle of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when with his uh, gesture he split the moon in two. And uh, because different narrators, they, they mention different details about the event, a summary of what happened based upon the narrations uh, accessible to us. The, uh, as was the case uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the disbelievers, they demanded, they wouldn't request obviously, they demanded. So they demanded that they see something which would uh, prove the, uh, the truth or the truthfulness of the claim of prophethood. So if, if you are a prophet of Allah, show us something which proves that you're a prophet of Allah. Now with the event of the splitting of the moon, one narration mentions that they actually sought advice from uh, sought advice from a sorcerer or sorceress that which which miracle should we ask him to perform? Allah. And one of the sorcerers who was present, or one of the people present there in the crowd of people, whispered that tell Muhammad <laughs> tell him to do something in the sky because the effect of sorcery is uh, limited to the earth. And this is the beautiful thing about it, uh, that he actually, they had a plan that we're going to prove Same. in their own minds that we're going to tr uh, try to refute, na'uzu billah, the claim of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, with uh, a gesture of his, he, he pointed towards the moon. And according to one tradition, one half was on, uh, on top of the mountain, the other seemed to be at the bottom of the mountain. Allah. And then he came back together again with his ishara, with his Allah. gesture. Those who actually gave the advice, it is said they became Muslims. Uh -huh. But people like Abu Jahl, obviously, uh, yeah. and other, some other people, they still did not embrace Islam. This is the point I want to uh, uh, highlight here. That sometimes we think, oh, I will give such a dalil. I no will give such an evidence. I will give such a hadith. You can't deny it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recite a verse of the Quran. Some people, sometimes people are confused about the uh, appropriateness or the praiseworthy nature of celebrating and commemorating the life of the Prophet wasallam. You say to them that Allah has commanded us to um, express, bless, uh, express happiness for His mercy. The Prophet wasallam in the Quran is mercy for all the world. So why do we need to give a hadith? Allah. The fact that we are celebrating the mercy of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu is mercy personified. Subhanallah. It's the verse of the Quran. We're not even giving a tafsir. We're not giving, giving, giving an interpretation. The Prophet is referred to as mercy for all the world. We don't need to go anywhere else. But still, people are... They will give. They will still not accept sometimes, unfortunately, or they still won't understand. So this uh, idea or this thought that we will uh, say something that will change the heart of an individual, or there is no way that what I'm going to say can be refuted. So, th this is something which we shouldn't think. We are. Our job is to convey. Our job is to preach, our job is to remind people and teach people about the love, the miracles, the characteristics of the Prophet Wasallam. If someone opens his heart to these things, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will grant him blessings. But a heart that is closed, Allah forbid, if, if someone's heart is sealed, Allah has described them in the Quran, then we shouldn't lose our passion and lose our, and we shouldn't spoil our happiness because we can't convince certain people to do something which will benefit them. So the reminder to summarize is a miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was um, a heavenly miracle, a miracle of the heavens, something that sorcery could not explain. Sorcerers embraced Islam, but those, Allah those Allah. who sought their advice didn't follow, their, uh, follow them in embracing Islam. So we as people should know that sometimes things uh, can be very clear, but people st still some people won't accept. We should not stop uh, speaking the truth. So I just want to carry on from, mashallah, uh, Kamar Bai is uh, very beautifully explained this. And this, the people who, who reject, on the other hand, they are people who are the ones who accept it. Uh, and they are those like, 
who accepted it in, in, in such a way like Sayyidina Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went to Mihraj, right? And the, the Kuffar thought this was a time that we can, we can take the, we can weaken the Muslims or we can maybe make them think, oh, this cannot happen. But when they came into the court of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala no, and uh, Abu Jahal and they, they, they started to say to uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala no, that your Prophet, he's saying that he's gone to the heaven. The Waqi of Miraj, after, this is after the event of Miraj. From going from Makkah to Makarma to Masjid al-Aqsa and from Masjid al-Aqsa to the heavens and beyond. So they were, they were thinking maybe Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala is not going to accept. But look at the, the um, Iman of the Sahaba. The belief of the Sahaba was such the Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, he didn't, he didn't think twice. Subhanallah. He said, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said this, there's no doubt about it. It will it, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has done this. So this was the, the beliefs of the Sahaba. And it shows that the, the two different phases, the people who sort of get into this trap of the whispers of shaitan, who get, they, they go on to the side of Abu Jahl. And those who ac learn to accept those things which are related to the Prophet sallallahu this is the, the sign of belief, the, the way of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. Subhanallah. Yani, ke, baat to dekhe na, wo, wo hi keh raha ke, batao aisa ho sakta hai, nahi ho sakta hai. Or ke, mere aqa alayhi salatu salam farma rahe ke, mein batao ke, tere haat mein jo kankariya hai, wo batao hai. Ke, tere haat mein kya hai, wo kankariya kalma padhi hai, phir bhi iman nahi leke aara, phir bhi hai ki. To baat ye hai, ke jo kamar bhai bhi samjhane ki baat kar rahe te, Allah ne jiske naseeb mein lik diya hai na. तो वो मिलेगा लेकिन मकसद क्या है बल्ले वो अन्नी वालों आया और मकसद है पहुंचा देना मनवाना काम नहीं है हमारा काम पहुंचा देना है नेकी की दावत देना आजान मौजिन देता रहता है कोई नमाज पढ़ने आए या ना आए ही डजेंट केयर अबाउट दैट हिज जॉब इज टू गिव अजान इसी तरीके से हमारे काम भी यही है कि नेकी की दावत देते रहे आका की सुन्नतें बताते रहे आका की सीरत के बारे में बताते रहे लोग ये देखे मिलाद मनाया जाता है और सीरत अपनाई जाती है लोग मिलाद के महीने में सीरत मना रहे होते सीरत अपनाई जाती है और मिलाद मनाया जाता है तो हम मिलाद मनाते हैं और आगा की सीरत अपनाते हैं तो इनशाला दुनिया भी बेहतर होगी और आखरत भी बेहतर होगी हमारी माशा कमर बाई ब्यूटीफुल एक्सप्लेन मेनी मदनी फ्लावर्स वी कैन टेक फ्राम दैन ओसो माशा एडिंग ऑन टू अब हनान बाई इज these two points आर ट्राई टू कंटिन्यू कमर बाई माशा मैं ब्यूटीफुल सोसर इज दे गेव द एडवाइस दे एक्सेप्ट इट अबू जाल अबू ला पीपल एक्सेप्ट ओसो ड्रिंग द टाइम ऑफ योर ओन द मजिशन दे एक्सेप्ट इट Firaun didn't accept, and if you look at the time of Firaun, Musa al-Islam, many miracles Musa al-Islam performed at that time. One of the blessed miracles of Musa al-Islam at that time is that he used to speak directly with Allah Almighty, yeah. without any veils. And then once Musa al-Islam, he requested that to Allah Almighty, may I behold you, may I see you, and the request it was denied. Musa al-Islam couldn't see Allah Almighty, and this is a request of Musa al-Islam. But yet on the other hand. Our master Aka sallallahu alaihi wasallam does a request, and yet Jibrail alaihi salam is sent, and then is sent to the house. Jibrail alaihi salam is now pondering and thinking: How do I enter? Do I knock? Do I come through the roof? What do I do? How do I wake up the blessed Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Is resting at the house of Umm Hani, and then Jibrail alaihi salam, the leader of all the angels, with his beautiful, cool lips, kisses the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to wake up the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then from there, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the next miracle. This miracle has so many miracles inside it. The miracle of Mashallah Miraj, which Brother Abdul Hanan by touched on. This miracle has so many miracles inside it Bishan. that we can do a whole sitzla on these miracles. Which ride is being prepared for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? If it's our wedding, if it's our children's wedding, the cars are hired, the the protocol is done. The, then there's the, these cameras in the sky. The, everything is shown. Now look at the vehicle. Look how my son is traveling today. He is the king. He is the one that today is all about him. But yet the ride was not from this dunya. The ride was from paradise. So and when Jibreel alayhi salam went to select the ride of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was many burak. And out of fakhr, out of pride, out of their beauty, they were all thinking that today is going to be that's going to be selected. But yet there was one burak that was crying in the corner. Allah, Allah. He was crying and weeping when Jibreel alayhi salam inquired, "Why are you crying?" The burak said that I'm crying. Maybe I won't be selected. But that burak was selected. Then it's written that when that burak was selected, it was beautified even more. This burak was bought as a right. And look at the power of this burak. This burak. 
His speed is such that wherever his eyes sight sets, that's his first step. That's the speed of the burak. And when the Prophet ﷺ sits on this burak, and the Prophet ﷺ travels, now you and I, we also travel. We travel in the air, we travel in airplanes. Now question I ask the viewers of Madhini Channel, when you are in that plane, and the plane has taken off and is in the sky, you try to spot your house. Very difficult. It's very difficult to try to spot your house. If you go a little bit further, now you're above the clouds. Now try to spot something. Try to find your area. Try to locate anything. Try to see a landmark. You can't see anything. You see True. the clouds. Your children say, Dad, lift the window. What can I see? Clouds. Now the Prophet ﷺ is traveling on the burak. Look at the speed of the burak. Look at the height of which Rasulullah ﷺ is traveling. The airplane has a limit. It can't go beyond that height. Now the Prophet ﷺ is traveling at this speed, at this height, and the Prophet ﷺ looks down. And the Prophet ﷺ doesn't see what's on the earth, but he sees what is inside the earth. Salaam and he sees Musa Salaam offering salah inside his grave. A miracle of the Prophet ﷺ, not just knowing what is on the earth, but also seeing what is inside the earth. Musa Salaam, who wished to see and had that desire to see Allah Almighty, is offering his salah in the grave. Can you and I see from the plane? No. Are we like the Prophet ﷺ? No, the Prophet further continues. It's a very long walk. Mashal Aqsa from Mashal Aqsa. The Prophet goes to the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. And in the sixth heaven, who does the Prophet meet? Musa. Musa in the grave. Musa Mashal Aqsa. Musa in the heaven. This is the speed of Musa. What's the, imagine the speed of Musa Islam's Aqa. Our Master. The Prophet. That, that dua and the request of Musa al Islam, Oh Allah, I wish to behold you, I wish to see you. The Prophet وسلم, is seeing Allah Almighty. The Prophet وسلم, then returns. I'm shorting the waqiyah, but the Prophet وسلم, then returns. Musa al Islam, the ulama state, a very beautiful thing. Musa al Islam desired to see Allah Almighty. But Musa al Islam stops the Prophet, وسلم, looks in the eyes of Rasulullah and وسلم. sees the manifestation, the light. He sees, he sees the eyes that have seen Allah Almighty. May I see the eyes that Allah has seen all Allah Almighty? The Prophet وسلم, goes again and comes back, and the Prophet وسلم, is not seeing Allah Almighty once, going, returning again. Many times the Prophet وسلم, goes and returns back, and again Musa al Islam is looking into the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ. And again, he's seeing those eyes that have seen Allah Almighty. Again, inside this miracle, there are many miracles, inshallah, we'll try to continue on the next opportunity. Oh. موسیقی میرے آقا علیہ السلام کا اٹھنا موجزہ میرے آقا علیہ السلام کے مبارک دندان جو ہیں وہ بھی موجزہ میرے آقا علیہ السلام کے مبارک ہوت جو ہیں پتلی پتلی گلے قدس کی پتیاں ان لبوں کی نزاکت پر لاکھ و سلام وہ یعنی سن سے لے کر سر کے بالوں سے لے کے میرے آقا علیہ السلام کے مبارک پاؤں کے ناخنوں تک ایک ایک چیز جو ہے وہ سراپا موجزہ ہے تو آپ اتنے سے سلسلے میں کیا کیا باتیں کریں گے کوشش کر رہے ہیں کہ بس آقا کی محبت کسی طرح نہ ہمارے دلوں کے اندر جو ہے نا وہ راسک رہے اور بڑھتی رہے یہ ایمان کا ایک خاصہ ہے ایمان کا حصہ ہے یقین کریے کہ جتنی محبت بڑھتی جائے گی نا آقا سے اتنا ایمان مضبوط ہوتا جائے گا انشاءاللہ کمر بھائی سے مزید مدنی پھول لیتے ہیں اب آدھا میریکلز اب دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم جی جی شاہ Continuing on this theme of miracles, one of the one type of miracle that we mentioned was our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, foretelling events and telling us about things that will happen in the future. When the in the year six hundred and fourteen, 
the two main empires um, of that time, the era of the Prophet Sallallahu the Persian em uh, Empire and the Roman Empire. Their conflict began um, uh, full flow 614. Two years later, 616, the Persians, they defeated the Romans. Um, and the Quran, the verses of Surah Al-Rum were revealed and the Quran mentioned the, in the verses it was mentioned that the Romans were defeated uh, in a nearby uh, land and soon after some time they will be victorious or they will be predominant. Now when because the link with the Muslims was this that the Persians would worship fire and obviously the Christians they believed in God so um, the Muslims felt sl uh, a slight um, uh, similarity because obviously they were people of the book they considered them to have a book and those Christians who followed the book um, or, or followed the traditional teachings they obviously were followers of a religion whereas the disbelievers of Makkah al Mukarramah they uh, felt a closeness or a nearness or they were uh, an affinity to the Persians so when the Persians defeated the Romans the disbelievers of Makkah um, or the disbelievers in the time of the Prophet وسلم, they were ridiculing the Muslims. They were mocking the Muslims saying, oh look, your brothers, they also believe in God like, uh, like you do and believe in the book. And uh, they're defeated by our brothers. Meaning, because the Persians worship other than Allah, uh, they worship fire or whatever else they worship. And, uh, they've been defeated, etc, etc. The to such an extent that it seemed apparently, um, if not impossible, highly, highly unlikely that the Romans would ever recover from that. But because the, the verses of the Quran were revealed, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and whom had certainty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, the Prophet sallallahu has foretold us this through revelation, then the, the, uh, the Romans will conquer, the Romans will win. And... Uh, after a nine-year period approximately, on the day of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Romans defeated the Persians. So what the Prophet وسلم, foretold became true. The verses of the Quran and the truth of the verses of the Quran became clear for all the people. That should have been another moment where um, it's, got, it's something that, it, that has happened in history or in their presence. Not their history, in, in their presence. But that was another moment for them to accept. Our Prophet وسلم, the hadith mentioned in Bukhari, he even foretold, he said that after this Kisra, this Persian ruler, and after this Qaisar, after this Roman emperor, there will not be another Qaisar, <coughs> there will not be another Roman emperor, and there will not be another Persian emperor after these, or these two. And their treasures, their treasures, both of their treasures will be distributed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was a ishara that the Muslims would overpower these uh, empires and the Muslims would be the one who are giving their treasures in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every historian knows this. We don't have to quote hadith for this. That's in the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala and the, the Muslims were able to, uh, the empire of the Muslims spread to such an extent that these treasures did come into the possession of the Muslims and they gave this in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last point I want to mention all following this theme about foretelling our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the hadith in Muslim before the battle of Badr when he marked Allah, Abu Allah, Jahl Allah, will die here, this, this uh, disbelieving chief will die here, this disbelieving chief will Allah, die here. Allah. And after the battle, the various Allah, locations, Allah, the messenger Allah. of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marked, that's where the dead bodies of these disbelievers were found. This was the foretelling of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. My brother, the thing that is happening and thinking about it, and where is it going to be? The end of the day, the events of the day, my brother, Salaam wa Salaam, has been done and they have been told what is going to happen. They have been told that they have been told in the war, where the people who have been killed in the war, where the people who have been killed in the war. If you go to these events, only my brother, the thing that is happening and thinking about it, my brother, the thing that is happening and thinking about it, there are so many events that my brother, Salaam wa Salaam, 
فرماتے ہیں کہ کھڑے صحابہ کرام موجود تھے کہ میں اس وقت بھی اپنے حوض کوثر کو دیکھ رہا ہوں اب حوض کوثر کہاں پر ہے حوض کوثر ہے جنت کے اندر جنت کہاں ہے حضرت انس رضی اللہ عنہ روایت ہے کہ جنت ساتوں آسمانوں سے اوپر ہے اور عرش کے نیچے ہے میرے آقا کھڑے کہاں پر ہے مدینے میں اور اس وقت بھی اپنے حوض کوثر کو دیکھ رہے ہیں میرے آقا علیہ سلاۃ السلام کیا کیا دیکھ میرے آقا نے فرمایا کہ جیسے میں آگے دیکھتا ہوں ویسے ہی پیچھے بھی دیکھتا ہوں تمہارا حتیٰ کہ تمہارا خوشو اور خدو تمہارا رکو بھی مجھ سے پوشیدہ نہیں ہے یہ میرے آقا کی نظر کا کمال ہے میرے آقا علیہ سلاۃ السلام تو یہ بھی فرماتے ہیں کہ جو اعلیٰ حضرت نے لکھا نا کہ چھ جہت ہے ہم کہتے ہیں آگے پیچھے رائٹ لیفٹ آگے پیچھے لیکن اوپر نیچے چھ جہت میرے آقا علیہ سلاۃ السلام کی ڈائریکشن کے حوالے سے اعلیٰ حضرت نے کلا شیر لکھا ہے شش جہت شش کہتے ہیں چھ کو شش جہت سمت مقابل شپو روز ایک ہی حال دھوم و نجم میں ہے آپ کی بینائی کی یعنی کہ کسی بھی سمت ہو میرے آقا جو ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اس کو ایسے دیکھ لیتے تھے کہ جیسے آگے جیسے دیکھتے نا کہ اندھیرے میں مطلب اجالے میں جو دیکھ سکتے ہیں وہ اندھیرے میں نہیں دیکھ سکتے جو آپ آگے دیکھ سکتے وہ پیچھے نہیں دیکھ سکتے میرے آقا ہر چیز کو برابر دیکھ لیتے تھے یہ کمال ہے میرے آقا علیہ سلاۃ السلام کی بنائی کا بلکہ ہم اس پہ کیا بات کریں جو میرے آقا علیہ سلاۃ السلام کا وہ واقعہ کہ نماز کسو پڑھا رہے ہیں کھڑے مدینے کے اندر ہے اور ہاتھ جنت میں پہنچ رہا ہے کہ خوشے کو توڑنے کے لیے کھجور کے کھڑے مدینے میں نگاہ وہاں پر ہے اور ہاتھ کہاں پہنچ رہا ہے ہاتھ بلند کرے تو ہاتھ اوپر نہیں جاتا نگاہ آسمان تک جاتی ہے لیکن میرے آقا کی نگاہ کا یہ عالم بلکہ ہاتھ کا یہ عالم ہے کہ وہ جنت میں جا رہا ہے یا مدینے میں کھڑے ہیں تو نگاہ کا عالم کیا ہوگا تو کس کو دیکھا یہ موسا سے پوچھے کوئی آنکھ والوں کی ہمت پہ لاکھوں سلام تو یہ میرے آقا علیہ سلاۃ السلام کی اگر صرف اسی کے اوپر ہم بات کرتے رہے نا تو ہمارا سلسلہ ختم ہو جائے گا لیکن اور بہت ساری باتیں بھی ہیں ہمارے افتخار بھائی بھی کچھ کہنا چاہ رہے تھے بلکہ عبد الحنان بھائی اس سے کچھ فرما رہے تھے پہلے صحیح صاحب یو جسٹ ٹاکنگ ابات دی آئیز اینڈ دا پروفیسر اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہی ہی نو جسٹ ود ہز اون سائٹ ہی پوزیس بٹ دی آئیز اف ادرز دا پروفیسر اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم گیو دیم پاور از ول سبحان اللہ سینا خطاد رضی اللہ تعالی ان دا بیٹل آف اوہد دی ایرو سٹاک ہز آئی اینڈ اٹ کیم اؤٹ اف دی دی ساکٹ اینڈ ہی اسٹارٹڈ ٹو ہینگ آن دا چیک اف Sayyidina Khutada radiallahu ta'ala. And Sayyidina Khutada radiallahu ta'ala, he comes into the court of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is coming into the court of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's showing his eye to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes his, uh, the eye and places it back into the socket. Sayyidina Khutada radiallahu ta'ala says that eye became more beautiful than before. He, able to, he, he had more light than what he was before. That this eye was able to see better than the other eye. So why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam touched him? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his sight is different, but when he touches someone else's eyes, that, that eyes is blessed with something else as well. SubhanAllah. Also, there's another narration which is, talks about uh, the blind man who came into the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The blind man talks about his, uh, his problems, his difficulties. Why? Because he's blind, he can't see. And he, he's telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he says that, Ya Rasulullah, my eyes, make dua that Allah grants me eyes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I can grant you eyes, but if you if you have sabr, this will be better for you. But he says, no, I would I would like my sight. Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he 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 teaches him that he goes says perform wudu and then go and perform and make this dua that oh Allah azawajal fulfill my need through the uh, through the mercy of your Prophet the wasila and the blind man there and then he he gained his sight back. Subhanallah, these are the people who did not have eyes. They came into the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the blessing of the wasil of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were granted eyes. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Shah Sab, I was enjoying, MashaAllah, you describing how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam standing on this earth was uh, seeing in Jannah, was grasping in Jannah. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'd just like to add one to it. That came to my mind as you were speaking that Sulaiman Alaihi Wasallam, the famous waqiya of Sulaiman Alaihi Wasallam, listening to an ant three miles away. Now we can't see, you can probably see or hear an ant in, if that's in our vicinity. But the Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam, he heard what that ant was saying and how it was telling the rest of the tribe to go into the hole. Because you are going to get trampled on, you can get crushed. Allah. And Sulaiman alayhi salam smiled from three miles away. Now Vakir comes to mind when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam heard a stone dropping in Jahannam. And the, and the Sahaba Ikram al-Ridwan, they inquired on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, explained to them that this stone was dropped 70 years ago. 70 years ago, this stone dropped and now it's reached the bottom of Jahannam. So we can see how deep and find from out from here, the depth of Jahannam. But going back to what I was mentioning earlier regarding the Miraj and the 
miracles inside the miracles that this miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu and Abdul Hanan by also mentioned is that a lot of things we obviously we can't co comprehend it can't go into our intellect a miracle we can't understand it it doesn't make sense it's not something that's going to make sense to us and if you were to explain to a child they might even ask how and why and how is it possible this is one of the signs that it's a miracle that you can't comprehend it and we hear from the ulama many a times that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this journey of Miraj, which has many miracles inside this miracle, that the Prophet is a, a vast journey. If you travel from Makkah to Makarama to Masjid al Aqsa, it's months of journey. Then one heaven, from one heaven to the other heaven, is 500 years of journey. So this journey, then Sidratul Muntaha, the La Muqa, etc., is thousands of years of journey. We can't comprehend this. You can't go into our mind, our intellect. How is this possible? But the amazing thing is that, I'll just finish on this, is that when the ulama mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu return, the, the bed is still warm. The water is still running and the lock is still moving. Now you think to yourself, how, how is this possible? So all this journey that's taken place and the bed is still warm. You go to work without comparison. We go to work, we come back. Is our bed warm? No, we can fudge your time, we wake up, we come back and our bed is cold. And that's only a small amount of time. Yet the Prophet ﷺ performed this journey of many, many miles, thousands of miles return. And the, the lock is still moving, the bed is still warm, and the water is still flowing. And I remember Abdul the Labib by uh, mentioning uh, removed the veils and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Sallam. able to see. So this was his blessed uh, sight. And he was able to see and answer every single question. Shasab, it's not necessary that you go to a place and you're going to see every door and every window. True. And this was the, the disbelievers, this was a trick from them that they wanted to somehow uh, try to find a weak point. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow this for his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the whole world, he sees it like the palm of his hand. So for, for them to ask about Masjid Aqsa, if they, if they asked about any corner of the world, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have told them. So uh, the, he answered all their questions and then they had nothing else to say. Allah. There was nothing else to say after that. Subhanallah. Bolte hain sangreze, bolte hain sangreze. Aapke ishale se, bolte hain sangreze. Aapke ishale se, dekhe hain shajar chalte. Me, me, me. 
what we were talking about about miracles and acceptance of miracles and um, you know there sometimes a person can get confused how this action is possible this action is possible but i just want to give a little bit of a mindset regarding if you go back a hundred years say it's a hundred years ago um, just over a hundred years there weren't planes flying objects didn't fly into the sky and then if you would have told them people that uh, a something will fly into the sky which will carry 100 or 200 300 people and it will also carry whatever the luggage they will have how do you think they, would their mind would have accepted that or not it would they wouldn't accept that in the same way if if with the technology the way technology is going forward now if you told people that um, you know that you could a person who might be sitting one part of the world and another person might be sitting on another part of the world they can see each other they can speak to each other, they can see each other's gestures, the, how they are signing, how they are speaking, how what are they, and they're communicating with each other. The person might have thought, oh, what's this, what's this person talking about? You know, someone in another part of the world is speaking to someone in another, how is this possible? 100 years or 200 years, these people would not have imagined or would have not able to accept the fact that this was possible. Yet both of these things are happening in our time. Planes, when they, they take off, they can carry and take hundreds of people into that, into the sky, a, a heavy object made of so much metal, so much material, then carrying so much luggage, so much things even flying into the sky. Now, 100 years ago, 200 years, these people would not have accepted the fact that this could happen. Yet, if them people were to see it, now they would have accepted. Same wise, when, when people are speaking through social media, through video calling, one person is one part of the world, someone is in another part of the world, someone is in another part and is speaking to each other, they're having a conversation, they see what the, where the person is sitting, how is he moving, what is he saying, the things which are behind him, all this is able to see. And a person, you know, same way the people deny that the Prophet ﷺ is able to see something from one part of the world to another, or the Prophet ﷺ is able to hear something from another part of the world. Or oh, oh, the old Ya Allah, or the pious people of Allah. Yet technology has proved all this. I'm just giving you an example. Those things which people are not uh, able to accept a few hundred years ago, those things are happening. So the miracles, people's minds are not able to accept, yet there'll come a time when they will see. And on the day of judgment, all this will become clear. Asal, here, Abdul Hanan bhai clear karna chahe te, mein isko is arz karu, ke people, they accept what the, the science say, logic ke taur pe, Islam जो है ना इसकी जो बातें इसकी जो चीजें वो हर चीज साइंस इस्लाम के अंदर तो आ सकती है इस्लाम साइंस के हिसाब से नहीं चल सकता है साइंस की थ्योरी तो 100 इयर्स के बाद से बता रहे 100 इयर्स पहले कुछ और होती थी 100 इयर्स के बाद कुछ और होती है 100 भी दूर की बात है अभी तो टेक्नोलॉजी इतनी तेज है 50 इयर्स के बाद कहते हैं बैकवर्ड है लेकिन इस्लाम ने जो बताया मेरे आका अलैहि सलातु सलाम के जो मौजजात है जो बात है ये तो रहती दुनिया तक है कुरान अब कुरान पाक के अंदर जो मौजूद है आदम अलैहि सलाम से लेकर कयामत तक की खबरें दे रहा है और जो खबर दे रहा है वो खबर हक और सच्ची दे रहा है तो अब बात ये है कि मेरे आका अलैहि सलातु सलाम ने जो इंसान है ये मशीनें इंसान ने बनाई हैं ठीक है इंसान बना रहा है आप उसकी पावर पे यकीन कर रहे हैं अल्लाह अज्जवजल जब अपने बंदों को पावर दे रहा है अल्लाह ताला रूहानी ताकत अदा करता है अंबिया کرام علیہ السلام کو جو معجزات عطا کرتا ہے جو طاقت عطا کرتا ہے اس کو دنیا کے حساب سے کیا کمپیر کرنا ہے اپ نے اس کو کیا اپ لوجک ڈھونڈ رہے ہوتے ہیں کس طریقے سے اپ ڈھونڈ رہے ہوتے ہیں کہ یہ میری بات سمجھ میں ائے اصل میں معجزہ تو وہی ہے جو ایکسپلین کیا جو عقل میں نہ ائے تو ہم تو عشق کے بندے ہیں ہم کیوں بات بنا رہے ہیں اپ مجھے بتائیں نا میرے آقا علیہ الصلوۃ والسلام کے اختیارات کی بات کر رہے ہیں حضرت انس رضی اللہ عنہ راوی بخاری شریف میں پڑھیں میرے آقا علیہ الصلوۃ والسلام پہاڑ پر جاتے ہیں اور پہاڑ پہ میں کون ہے فاروق اعظم رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ وہ اگر صدیق رضی اللہ تعالی عثمان خلیل رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ میرے آقا علیہ الصلوۃ والسلام کے ساتھ ہے پہاڑ ہلنے لگتا ہے علماء کہتے ہیں پہاڑ کو وجد آ جاتا ہے کیونکہ اتنی معزز ہستیاں جو ہے وہ پہاڑ کے اوپر ہے آ جاتا ہے تو میرے آقا علیہ الصلوۃ والسلام اپنے پاؤں کی ٹھوکر مارتے ہیں اب میرے اور اپ کی پاؤں کی ٹھوکر سے کچھ ہوتا ہے کچھ بھی نہیں ہوتا لیکن یہ میرے آقا کی ٹھوکر ہے جس کے بارے میں اعلی حضرت نے لکھا کہ ایک ٹھوکر میں عہد کا زلزلہ جاتا رہا رکھتی ہیں کتنا وقار اللہ اکبر ایڑیا میرے آقا علیہ السلام نے فرمایا اے اور ٹھہر جا تیرے اوپر ایک نبی اچھا سب اس وقت حیات ایک نبی اور تیرے اوپر 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 ایک نبی اور تیرے
एक सिद्दीक और दो शहीद हैं कितने सालों की बात की खबर दे रहे हैं मेरा आका ले सला कमो है पच्चीस साल का अरसा आप समझे ना अबू बकर सिद्दीक रदी अल्लाह तुम कमो पे दो ढाई साल हमारे जो है फारूक आजम रदी अल्लाह तुम की अगर आप देखें उनकी दस साल हुकूमत फिर उस्मान गनी रदी अल्लाह तुम की हुकूमत कितने बात की खबरें बल्कि कयामत तक की खबरें जो दे रहे हैं बल्कि ये भी बता रहे हैं कि ये औहद पहाड़ हमसे मोहब्बत करता है जन्नत में जाएगा नजर देखें कमाल देखें इनमें गैब का और एक पहाड़ है मदीने शरीफ के बाहर जिसको देखकर मेरे आका सलात सलाम ने फरमाया ये हमसे बुख्स रखता है ये जानम में जाएगा इससे बढ़ के क्या और आप बात करेंगे जो मेरे आका फतरों को भी जानता है ये फत्थर जानम में जाएगा ये पहाड़ जानम में जाएगा ये पहाड़ जन्नत में जाएगा तो मेरे आका सलात साम ये भी जानते हैं कि ये उमती है ये जन्नत में जाएगा और ये जो लोग हैं ये जो गुनागार हैं इनके साथ क्या होगा तो हमें यकीन रखना है कि जो कुछ भी मेरे आका को अता किया रब ने इतना अता किया कि किसी और को अता ना हुआ था अल्लाह हमें इन चीजों पर वो कहते हैं ना कि इधर उधर नहीं देखना चाहिए जो हक है सच है जो हमारे ओलामा हक ने बयान किया उसी के ऊपर अमल करना चाहिए today's science can't explain certain uh, miracles prophetic miracles which are found in our traditions that in itself is evidence of it being miraculous because if apparent means uh, can explain the event then it it wouldn't be defined as a miracle so the miracle is something which normally doesn't happen you can't so if there was a logical kind of explanation for it then the disbelievers of that time would not have uh, accepted it and i guess even today with the miraj and um, the time difference even in science today so the mm. scientists and the, uh, they, they don't know much about time at all i mean we remember from our college days we used to ask our lecturers and, and they said i said what do we know they said we know very little we don't know about uh, how many mysteries time itself has we don't know how time actually works we don't know anything about time it's just theoretical things that we uh, we mention so you have established science and then you have the theoretical side of, of science which as you uh, alluded to shasab the theoretical side of things people are just making assumptions we think this we think this we think that so uh, their thinking changes over time over 10 years 15 years however many years so a miracle a mu'jiza will always be something which is extra extraordinary it's beyond the apparent uh, means and beyond the apparent uh, resources that you see that's why it's miraculous the second point um, uh, i want to relate more to what uh, you mentioned here shasab that not just human beings also things objects uh, we mentioned the tree we mentioned um, uh, the mountains the mountains sayyidina ali radhiyallahu ta'ala and the hadith in tirmizi he said i was walking uh, outside the outskirts of makkah al mukarramah and he said every tree and every mountain that i passed uh, that we passed he was with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had assalamu alayka ya rasul allah subhanallah that answers a lot of things and a lot of things can be said one the ya rasul allah even so mountains and trees understood subhanallah but some people with brains don't understand so mountains and trees so if it was shirk the, uh, the prophet would say you know all mountain just like he said to uhud the prophet said to uhud be still the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how could it be that uh, an expression of polytheism is mentioned the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stay silent about it assalamu alayka ya rasul allah and sayyidina ali to express it to kind of emphasize it so even more he said i heard it with my very own ears allah you know, allah someone says that you don't have any doubts about it. i heard it with my very own ears i heard it so don't have any doubts about it so we should have any doubts about our ma'mulat ahl sunnah Uh, the yeah. uh, the the point that i want to mention very quickly about objects the tree stump Allah. that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in bukhari and different uh, hadith narrators mention it with their own uh, in their own beautiful words <laughs> the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to lean on that blessed tree to uh, deliver his lecture his khutba when the ansari woman radiyallahu ta'ala anha she makes the member for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not leaning against that tree stump they could hear the sahaba said we heard allah crying allah. from a tree stump allah we 
we, we listen to the miracles, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our hearts are still not feeling anything. No. A tree is, has this physical separation from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that tree stump can't bear it. The, the, the narrators say that it was crying like a baby crying. Oh, One wow. narrator said it cried it, it, like, like she camels make noises. That's the color. We could actually hear noises coming from this tree stump. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam embraced it. Allah. And you know when a child is crying and you embrace a child and they still carry on crying? Allah. For a little bit. That, that was the kind of, uh, that this is what they witnessed. And the different narrations, the Prophet Sallallahu in one narration said to it, and if you want, you could, you could live, uh, you could be on this earth forever and you could carry on giving fruit or if you want you could be a tree of paradise and the awliya will so eat from your Allah, fruit and the tree the tree stump it shows paradise Allah, so Allah, so Allah. and then this point was made that it shows uh, darul baqa over darul fara so it shows the lasting abode Man. over this temporary abode and look at us as people ashraful makhluqat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as best in creation a tree understands has such love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it cries yearning for the nearness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it's given a chance to make a choice between this world and the hereafter it chooses the hereafter oh man where are you? Allah. Allah. where money. are you drowned in heedlessness drowned in the love of this world you understand everything you understand the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but you choose this world over the hereafter and this will be regret for you so choose the hereafter over this world inshallah you'll be successful allah yaad rakhe jahan mein unki chalti hai wo dam mein kya se kya kar de zameen ko aasma kar de suraiya ko sara kar de nabi mukhtar e kul hai jisko jo chahe ata kar de hai bas taluq mazboot rakhe unhi ke qadamon mein pade rahe inshallah azza wa jal beda paar hoga duniya ke piche bhag rahe ye mil jaye wo mil jaye کبھی عشق رسول کے پیچھے بھاگنے کی بھی کوشش کریں کبھی آقا کی سنتوں کو اپنانے کی بھی کوشش کریں بارہ ہمارا ایک سیگمنٹ اور ہے بلوٹ ٹو دا پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آقا علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کے پیارے اور آج اس مبارک ہستی کا ذکر ہوگا وہ کون ہے دا لائن آف اللہ شیر خدا حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کے حوالے سے انشاءاللہ کچھ مدنی فون سنتے ہیں انشاءاللہ شاء وجل تو اسٹارٹ ود عبد الحنان بھائی ان شاء اللہ Sayyid Sahib, uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, one of the famous things regarding Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala is he's known as the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala sallam said that I am the city of uh, knowledge and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala is its door. Subhanallah. So he, he's known for his knowledge, uh, so great uh, in, in, in the way of his knowledge that the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala is saying that I am the city of knowledge and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala is its door. So the knowledge of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala was unique in so many ways. He had great knowledge of the deen and a great understanding. This is why, obviously, he's, he's amongst the Amirul Mu'mineen, the leaders of the believers, Subhan. and uh, the fourth Khalifa of Islam. Obviously, for someone to be leading the Muslims, they have to be someone with that great strategy of knowledge, that great understanding. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he possessed that. This was one of his greatness. MashaAllah. Uh, MashaAllah. Many uh, Madani flowers and points can be mentioned, but one of the um, famous accounts of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and characteristics of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and is his strength. Regarding the strength of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and he stated that during the, the Battle of Khaybar, that the, this massive fort and door that was huge, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and ripped it down with his own bare hands. Not only ripped it down, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and used that door as a shield to continue fighting. It's also stated that after the battle, that door when it was placed on the floor and the ground, 40 strong men tried to lift that door. Allah. 40 strong individuals tried to lift that door and they couldn't do so. This was the strength of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and that he used it one-handed as a shield, and these 40 men later on, they couldn't lift that door. So the power, the strength of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an is very famous. MashaAllah, Kamar bhai se bhi madni phool lete, lekin mein isi incident ke awale se mein arz kar dhu madni phool, ke ye bo waqiya tha, mere aqa alayhi salatu salam ne ek raat pehle, 
یہ فرمایا کہ کل میں جھنڈا اس شخص کے ہاتھ میں دوں گا جس کے ہاتھ پر اللہ تعالیٰ فتح عطا فرمائے گا جو اللہ اور رسول سے محبت کرتا ہے اور اللہ اور اس کا رسول بھی اس سے محبت کرتا ہے اور وہ دوسرے دن جو جھنڈا دیا گیا تھا وہ حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ حالانکہ کہ اس وقت وہ آئے نہیں تھے اور پوچھا گیا کہاں تو پتہ چلا کہ جی ان کی آنکھ میں جو ہے وہ تکلیف ہے میرے آقا نے لوہ دہن لگایا اور وہ جاتے ہیں اور یہ جو مشہور واقعہ کہ وہ جا کے دروازہ جو ہے اٹھا کے صرف نکالا نہیں تھا بلکہ ڈھال کے طور پہ جس کو اب کوئی دروازہ عام دروازہ تھوڑی بندہ عام دروازہ ڈھال کے طور پہ نہیں استعمال کر سکتا قلعے کا دروازہ اگر جا کر دیکھے تو قلعے کے دروازے مضبوط ہوتے تھے چالیس لوگ اس کو نہیں اٹھا سکتے تھے اور اتنے بڑے اور ان کی طاقت کا عالم دیکھیں اسی لیے تو شیر خدا لائن آف اللہ گرا کہ ایک ہاتھ سے تلوار ہے شیر خدا کے ہاتھ میں ایک ہاتھ سے جو ہے اس کا دروازہ تھا اس کو شیلڈ کے طور پہ استعمال کرتے تھے اور لیکن یہ وہ شخص ہے جن کے بارے میں آقا نے فرمایا کہ ان کو اس کے ہاتھ پہ فتح ہوگی اس کو علم دوں گا جس سے اللہ اور اس کا رسول بھی محبت کرتے ہیں تو یہ وہ مقدس ذات ہے مبارک ذات ہے جس کو لائن آف اللہ شیر خدا کرم اللہ وج الکریم جو ہے وہ ان کے نام سے یاد کیا جاتا ہے اللہ ان کی برکت ہم سب کو بھی عطا فرمائے سیدنا علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ماشاءاللہ Ali radiyallahu ta'ala and, and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the lineage of people it goes from the father but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed my lineage in the loins of Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala and. so Sadat al-Kiram they continue the prophetic lineage continues from Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala and, and Sayyidina Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala and. subhanallah mashallah mazid padhna chahte hain karamat e shair e khuda کرم اللہ وج الکریم کا رسالہ بڑا پیارا اس کو آپ پڑھ سکتے ہیں بہرحال ہمارے پاس کچھ منٹس رہ گئے ہیں آخر میں کنکلوڈ کرتے ہیں ول ٹیک فیو مدنی پھول فرام عبد الحنان بھائی انشاءاللہ اور پھر آخر میں کیا فرمانا چاہتے ہیں پھر افتخار بھائی عدیل بھائی اور آخر میں کمر بھائی انشاءاللہ سعید صاحب وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دی میریکلز آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ وٹ جس لائک ٹو پٹ فارورڈ از دیٹ دی امبیا دی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ پوزس گریٹ میریکلز اینڈ The Sahaba Ikram, those who were in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu they also possess many great miracles. There's many incidents of the, many of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala performing different types of miracles. Uh, like they say now, uh, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqaf Radiallahu Ta'ala he, he, the people wanted to cross the river, there was no boat and he, he, he read a dua and he went into the, uh, onto, onto the river and they crossed it. They crossed the, uh, the water just Shukhan. like this. Everyone who were there, those who were, all the believers who were there, those who were upon horses, those who were upon camels, they all crossed the water, uh, upon, uh, crossing the water like this without a boat, alhamdulillah. So the Sahaba also possessed many great miracles. And this, this is a chain, the awliya Allah, the pious people of Allah, the walis of Allah. And this will continue amongst the pious people, the miracles. Um, and these signs, they will be shown, inshallah, as well. And the greatness of the, the greatest miracles are, are, is obviously performed by our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah. رحمت اللہ علیہ کے کشتیاں جلا دیتے ہیں اور پھر فتح کر کر آتے ہیں یہ کی طاقت یقین کریں یہ ہے اسپریچل پاور اللہ جس کو چاہے عطا کر دے ماشاء اللہ کنٹینیو نان فرام ابرحنان بھائی ریگارڈنگ دا بلیسڈ کمپینینز اینڈ آلسو واٹ کمر بھائی مینشن ارلی ایپ دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فور ٹیلنگ واٹس گون ٹو ٹیک پلیس اے ویری فیمس کمپینین آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حضرت حذیف رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ ہوز فیمس ٹائٹل واز کیپر آف سیکرٹس Uh, whatever the Prophet Sallallahu so, Alaihi would tell him, he would keep as a secret. Even if all the other companions would come and ask uh-huh. and inquire, he would say, I'm not telling the secret. So, Why Aqal Islaat Islam has told me, I'm not going to tell anybody so, else. So, so, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him this knowledge of all the hypocrites. So whenever a funeral used to take place, a janazah used to take place, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala used to look in the saf and to see if Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala is amongst them. If Hazrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala and was amongst them, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala will also then participate in the janazah. If Hazrat Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala wasn't amongst them, Hazrat Umar understood that this is a janazah of a hypocrite, so I'm not also going to participate. So this is the knowledge passed on from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the blessed companions. Mashallah. Mashallah.
we've, we've been talking about the miracles of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A sign of love for the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that you talk about him and you uh, follow his way. So it's good for us and it's good for those who listen that we are, are privileged and honored to uh, mention these miracles of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's one evidence of the fact that we are we have a, div, uh, a love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But now it's time to show uh, that practically and adhere to the prophetic way, because this is what our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed. This is what will lead to Allah subhanahu wa taala granting us acceptance in His court. So quote and relate and share the miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But do it so that your love increases for him and that you follow his way. Mashallah. Main aakhir mein is pe khatam karna chahunga. Mere aaka alay salatu salam ki to wo kamal wo baat hai ki jis chopaye par jo hai sawari karte the jab tak sawar rehte the wo najasat na karta tha. Kabhi bhi mere aaka alay salatu salam ke jis mein mubarak par makhi machhar aisi cheeze nahi baithi jo gandagi ke upar baithti hain. Mere aaka ka to saaya bhi nahi tha. Hatta ke mere aaka ke kamal aur mojazat ki kya baat kare jinke naam ki barkat ye ke Muhammad aur Ahmad naam wale sirf khud jannat mein nahi jayenge balki agar un jinke walidain ne walid sahab ne ye naam rakha wo bacche unko bhi lekar jannat mein jayenge sirf kiski wajah se mere aaka alay salatu salam ke naam ki barkat se to unke kamalat ke unke mojazat ke बारे में क्या कहना आखिर में बस यही कहेंगे कह लेगी सब कुछ उनके सना खा की खामोशी चुप हो रहा है ये कह के मैं क्या क्या कहूं तुझे लेकिन रजा ने खत में सुखन इस पे कर दिया खालिक का बंदा खलक का आका कहूं तुझे की पहुंचिंग मदनी चैन Knowledge is the way to Jannah. The path of knowledge is the way to Jannah. The path of knowledge.